we are going to discuss network as a service, what it means in 5G world, and what are the new business models that are getting introduced because of that. Right. It is an important topic because first, 5G as a concept was new to us. Uh, we have been exposed to it in the past one year. Network as a service, the concept again for the Indian industry, how we are transitioning from a capex to an opex model is something that we still need to figure out. And the impact on business. So as I was thinking about what is it that I really want to talk about in this session and I want to ask the esteemed panelists that are here, I thought I have who's who of the industry. Right? Some of us go long way back, 20 years maybe founders of what telecom world used to look like, founders of business models when they never used to exist. It was a humbling experience for me to talk to each one of us here that are present. And this gives a great opportunity to look at this topic from a fresh perspective. On my right hand side are sitting people who are from the world of operating. They have set up the networks, they will talk about what their perspectives are. Also, I have people who offers services and interact with customers every day, including me, and what my clients are looking for in terms of use cases, monetization, the value that we need to deliver. So without much delay, I would first go to Mr. Atul. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. And why don't you talk about your perspective on 5G network as a service and what it means really for Airtel? Since you have been the founder of many new business models for Airtel, what does it really mean for Airtel and for its customers? Thank you, Sunil, and inviting me uh, on this panel. Uh, I think, firstly, uh, I would like to congratulate all of us on uh, launch of 5G. Airtel has, has already launched in eight cities, and we will soon uh, cover the rest of the cities, as, as, as was declared yesterday by our chairman. Uh, I think firstly, I would say that we are lucky enough, uh, India is lucky enough that 5G is coming at a time uh, when most of the ecosystem is matured, where it was launched two years back in many of the countries where devices were not matured, networks were not matured, they were getting the first gen equipments. We are at a time where we are getting the matured equipments, uh, hence our investments are safe. We are also getting the devices ecosystem which is much more matured what it used to be in the last two years. So hence, uh, our consumptions are going to be better as compared to the rest of the countries who had launched two years back. In that way, we are lucky enough, although we shouldn't, we shouldn't say that it gets delayed, it got delayed, but we, should, we are fortunate enough that it got two years late. Uh, I think over the last 20 years, the time 2G started till 5G now, and it's been now 30 years now. It started all, all the way in 1992, when Airtel also started and rest of the operators also started. It's been 30 years. And over this period, I think the customer requirements have changed, business models have changed. Customers no more require only the EMBB, which is just the mobile broadband service. They want rest of the, they want plethora of other services. And I think 5G is the first gen technology where people are talking about use cases. We never talked about use cases in 2G, 3G, and 4G, right? We were all talking about speeds. And 5G is the first time, and yesterday the Honorable Prime Minister also emphasized on uh, use cases. And, uh, and, and this is all this 5G service is all about. And when we talk about use cases, I think more than 50, 60% of the use cases are for enterprises. Uh, or, or SMEs or the large corporations. And if we, when we talk about corporations or enterprises, then network as a service comes into picture. The, although it's not only applicable for enterprises alone, but I think the majority portion of the use cases in network as a service comes uh, for enterprises. And let me tell you, it is not a new thing. NAS is not a new thing. We have been doing it. I mean, the definition is, you know, it's. Uh, NAS is something which is everybody is doing today. I'll just, it starts from as low as uh, provisioning on demand to bandwidth on demand to private networks, private LT networks, web entities, all are examples of network as a service. 
5G will just add on to new services over the network as a service which is already going on today and has been given by many other operators across the world. Uh, I think when we talk about network as a service, uh, there are three areas which operators look at. The first is the network connectivity and the infrastructure part of it, which all operators and Airtel especially is gearing up for that. And as I said, we are already into uh, this domain. In network infrastructure, be it edge cloud centers, be it uh, uh, SD WANs, the software defined radios, be it the connectivity, I think that's the first part. And overall orchestration, and it is stitched through the orchestration so, so as to give the uniform customer experience. That's part one. Part two, which I wouldn't say is challenge, but I think where the readiness required is required is on the partnerships. It's not only the network which requires to be built, it's the whole ecosystem, including your devices, including the cost of the devices, including upliftment of the skill sets in the organization. That all has to come uh, shoulder to shoulder. Networks alone will not uh, give you, uh, you know, benefits. The third part where industry is already struggling and the customers are also struggling to always select whether they should go for NAS or they shouldn't go for NAS. I think the question should be a little different. Why should they go for NAS? They should change the question to why should they change for NAS? Why should they go for NAS? I think the compelling reasons for them is obviously uh, uh, they don't want to invest capex for example. They can go on an ownership model. They can go on a sorry subscription model. They can go on an opex model. They can pay as you grow or pay as you use. They can you know pay as you demand, I, the de bandwidth on demand for example. Uh, and secondly, I think they do not have the skill set available for every service what they want to use. And hence, I think there are compelling reasons over and above that. There is a stickiness for the security also. Stickiness for the security also. I think these are the compelling reasons for the customers. Uh, that's on the customer side. And the last part which I want to touch upon is the monetization part of it. I think no, unit, no uh, business case, I mean, no use case can be successful if there is no business case for a customer as well as for a CSP. So there has to be co-creation of the business cases which has to happen along with the customers. It can be a value-based model, it can be a subscription-based model as we already said, or it can be anything else. I mean, this has to be created and it has to be monitored as well. I think if we address these three areas, the infrastructure which anyway we are gearing up and we don't see any challenge, there are significant investments needed to be made in that, which anyway operators are doing, uh, Airtel is doing. Uh, the second part is on the devices I talked about and third part is on the monetization. I think if these areas are addressed, I don't think that there are challenges uh, in making this network as a service successful in coming future. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Atul. Uh, those were three very, very important areas, right? The infrastructure part of it, the experience part of it, and the last being the monetization bit. So if you roam around all the halls there, you would realize this time in IMC, there is a huge focus on use cases. And one of the reasons why that is, is because 5G is not just the next generation. 5G becomes the foundation of the next set of use cases, metaverse, talking about so many other things. This is the building block. This is the tipping point that is going to happen. But very important point which Atul touched upon where I like to bring Gopal in is, this is going to be an ecosystem play. No single person will have the wherewithal to move the entire use case to profitable. Right? But having said that, I'm sure he has a point of view in that area and also he'll talk a bit about what are your views on 5G, the network as a service and how it's going to evolve. So over to you, Papa. Thanks, thanks, Sunil, and good afternoon to the panelists and also the audience. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, from an operator standpoint, what Atul touched upon, I just have, want to add a few points. Apart from the infrastructure, and uh, how we deploy the network, uh, 5G, 4G, whatever it is. There is a huge amount of uh, gravitating force happening towards the ecosystem play. I don't think 5G can be uh, led by one player. Of course, telcos can take a leading uh, positioning, but it requires a lot of diverse partnership to be stitched to create the value proposition to the customers. So we have seen that in the, uh, in the stalls, no use case is being driven by one uh, company. So, it's going to be an ecosystem play, largely. Therefore, how different diverse partnerships are getting stitched 
both at a design, planning, and solution level, and also how it can be taken forward to the commercial construct, and so on and so forth is going to be a very key. Okay. And second part, since I represent enterprise from VI perspective uh, as a CTO, large part of it from the enterprise ecosystem is changing. In fact, everybody knows that 5G is going to unlock huge amount of potential from an enterprise use cases, which was not possible some time back. There is a huge amount of curiosity among the CIOs and CTOs what uh, 5G network or 5G technology can do for us. Okay. So therefore, how we are going to kind of address that requirement. Network as a service, as I said, can be deployed in many ways. Slicing, you all know, is one of the concepts, very prevalent, and people are talking about it. And we can give uh, a low latency, on-demand services, SLA-based services, and so on and so forth. But some of the industries, uh, in the enterprise, especially the large industries, may not be getting served by the NAS as a, I mean, slicing as a, a service. You know, you may you may require to put up a private network, dedicated network to them to kind of address their use cases. So it's going to be, in pers my personal view, uh, it will be a hybrid model. Wherever you need slicing as a service, slicing slice network, where network as a service can be offered. Some places where you may have to create a network dedicatedly for serving large physical infrastructures. Uh, services or companies who require this. So that's how I see this to be happening. In fact, this partnership is not only going to be, uh, it is going to address the infrastructure part, which telcos bring in, it is going, you need a system integrators, you need an application providers, you need a device uh, uh, ecosystem providers. You also need the customers to be part of this ecosystem because large amount of requirements, now we can't keep the customer away, you know, the customer is going to be part of the ecosystem to create the right solutions. So that's how I see uh, this entire, uh, I would say, canvas is uh, kind of going to develop. And, uh, and of course, uh, as I said, we see, in fact, uh, from we, we have already started engaging with a lot of partners, addressing some of the customers' queries in terms of uh, private networks uh, uh, demonstration. And, and I can say that uh, we have covered a lot distance in terms of completing the POC and getting into a production network and so on and so forth. But one of the largest, challenges that we faced is on the integration part. While network is there, infrastructure can be kept. How do you kind of make the use case seamlessly work, giving the right experience to the customers, and also right KPIs to be met by the uh, uh, enterprises? Because enterprise is going to pay for this network. So the monetization model has to make sure that they gain business advantage, they gain quality advantage, they also gain another aspect of it through this network. So I think it's all evolving now, I would say. Uh, time will uh, definitely take us to that place. And with, with industry coming together and also customer being part of this ecosystem, I think a lot of things will, uh, will fall in place as the time progresses. Uh, thank you so much, Gopal, for that. Uh, you touched upon all the ecosystem players that are there that need to come together, somebody needs to orchestrate. But let me put myself in the shoes of the audience here. I'm, I'm sure all of you, some of you would be owning their business and you'd be wondering, if there are so many people involved, I really don't want to deal with this complexity, right? I, I, I want somebody to simplify this for me. I have, I need to get something done. I need to get my machine repaired in a remote manner. I need to do a predictive maintenance, right? I need to figure out one person who can do this job for me. The 5G, yes, unlocks the value, great. But how do I do it? Uh, where, where, where does these things lie? So there would definitely be an aspect of how you, as owners and entrepreneurs are going to consume those 5G use cases. And an aspect about how some of the operators and us sitting on this side are going to devise this to make your life simple. And that's where I'd like to bring in Radhisham, he's from Lions, and talk a bit about uh, his views on 5G network as a service. And how would that consumption and how would that solution offering work uh, on, on that? Because as, as a a uh, mid-sized company sitting there, uh, I would need some help, for sure. Thanks, Sunil. So, uh, while we all would understand uh, what is NAS, but again, uh, for the benefit of audience, I'd like to put it in a set of simple words. So, NAS is basically an OPEX-based subscription model to consume the network infrastructure. Essentially, if we look at cloud, what cloud has done to the IT, NAS is expected to do same for the networks. Um, I'd like to share my perspective to cover 
four key aspects. First, I would like to share what are the existing NAS services that are available. Secondly, how 5G is going to dri drive NAS. Third, I would like to share our technology strategy in Geo to drive NAS. And finally, I would also like to talk about the potential that India market holds to consume the NAS services. So to start with, uh, if you look at the existing NAS services, uh, they are pretty much, you can bucket them into two categories. Uh, these are land as a service and wine as a service. And if we dig a little deeper, the land as a service could be seen as managed Wi-Fi and SD LAN. Then uh, for WAN as a service, the key service is uh, SD WAN. And they have some uh, common attributes like manageability, observability, self-service, security, and so on. Now, how 5G is going to uh, drive NAS? Uh, one is, of course, it will drive the existing market of NAS, but that's more of a connectivity market. So let me talk about it in terms of three key aspects. One is the connectivity aspect, second is platform aspect, and third is application aspect. And again, I want to draw an analogy similarity with respect to the cloud. So in cloud, we all know about ES, PaaS, and SaaS. Think about consumption of network infrastructure as a service. That's what we know when we talk about connectivity as a service. So that's more similar to the cloud EaaS model. Then if I talk about the 5G capabilities, the capabilities can be open to enterprises. And the enterprises can be offered to consume a network slice or private 5G network as a service, or in future, uh, 5G LAN as a service for vertical industries, etc. So that's more of a platform model where the enterprise can take the platform capabilities and develop their own services on top of it. The third model is the application model where you can actually consume the use cases. So if I look at the 5G capabilities, just to simplify, you have certain capabilities like downlink throughput, uplink throughput, latency, and so on and so forth. And especially if I look at enterprise, I think more than downlink throughput, the requirement is uplink throughput and low latency. Because you have use cases like surveillance and you have use cases like remotely controlling a vehicle in a mining type of a setup, where you don't just need low latency, but also you need good uplink throughput because you have to deploy a lot of cameras to make sure that entire operation is executed in a very safe environment. Then drone type of use case also require low latency and uplink throughput. So these are the capabilities of 5G. Let's think about the capabilities as forming some atomic applications and then pick and choose a set of application to create a use case scenario. Now, 5G can give all these capabilities as platform on which the enterprise can get the application from the ecosystem player or can, in fact, go for a model where they can consume the application without bothering about the underlying infrastructure. So essentially, I see that the uh, the way the 5G is going to drive the NAS, it could be in terms of three key aspects. One is connectivity, the second is platform, and third is application. Now, having said that, I would also like to talk a little bit about uh, what is our strategy for NAS. Um, for sure, I think uh, India could be little late in terms of adopting 5G, but uh, as Geo, we have taken a leapfrog approach, and we have decided to deploy a pure standalone carrier aggregation enabled network. And uh, you can uh, see that all the uh, models that NAS is going to rely upon, for example, network slicing or private 5G, uh, they are very much aligned with standalone approach to 5G. Uh, this is the way it is being defined uh, in standards as well. Uh, and, and therefore, we are pretty much ready to deliver these capabilities based on our network architecture. Uh, thanks to the power of Geo Indigenous 5G, support from our global OEM partners and of course the ecosystem partners. I think while we might have started a little late, but where we have started, I believe that we are at least two to three years ahead of the global leading markets from that perspective. Last point that I wanted to cover is about India market. What is the potential that India market has to consume the NAS services? So if you look at the India enterprise market, there are about uh, 1,200 odd large enterprises, about 32,000 medium enterprises, then there is about 300k small enterprises, and about 5.4 million micro enterprises. So that's the huge market that is there in front of us. And again, 
depending on the size and depending on the requirement, not every one of these enterprises will have similar requirement. To start with, if I can talk about the small and micro enterprises, for example, they together will make it 5.7 million. They will predominantly consume connectivity as a service, which will enable them to use or consume the cloud applications, and it will drive their business into a progressive direction. If I talk about, for example, medium enterprises, they will not just look at connectivity, but also they would like to consume slice as a service so that they can get capabilities which today even large enterprises are able to get. The same would be available to medium enterprises. And finally, if I talk about large enterprises, probably they will go for all the three, the connectivity, the slice, and private 5G. That is how uh, it will basically accelerate the digital transformation of large enterprises. Um, one other last point that I want to make is uh, from a market size perspective, we believe that uh, in next five years, the incremental market size that will be enabled by 5G NAS in India would be approximately about $2 billion. And, and this is a good market, and indeed, I mean, it will be key to drive the digital transformation of all industries and uh, also help us to uh, basically fulfill the vision of our Prime Minister to have one trillion digital economy by 2025. Uh, that, that's where I kind of uh, conclude my view for the now, for the timing. Thank you so much, Raze. What really excited me about this, this is a $2 billion market poised towards the India small and medium businesses. We've been talking too much about the missing middle and the problem of missing middle that we have in that industry. Huge amount of value that can be unlocked in this space. An excellent uh, thought process on the three layers that we talked about. Uh, if I have to look at it from a business perspective, what could it imply is, I want to set up a clinic in a tier two town. All I need to do is tell somebody, you know, it needs to be a low latency use case, these are my requirements, and it's done. And it's done for two months, and then it's wrapped up and taken off from there, without any extra cost. So the revenue and the ROI of these kind of use cases really get magnified. The kind of camps that we do, and the kind of medical deficiency that the country has, I think it's a fabulous thing. The second thing you talked about was mining, an absolutely brilliant use case of remote operations of a mine, the command and control center that we can have. Too much value that can be unlocked, huge potential, and that's where uh, I would like to bring in Praveen. I mean, you are the CEO of the global services. You offer a lot of those services across for STL. Uh, how do you think this is panning out uh, for India and for the world? Thanks. Thanks, Sunil, and good afternoon, everyone. So it's, it's really a privilege to be here. Uh, yesterday, we were at this momentous time where we launched 5G services across the nation. And we saw a lot of use cases actually touching the common citizen uh, and mostly consumers. Today, I think this particular discussion on enterprise, and of course, uh, it's not that network as a service is not applicable for consumers. But with the enterprise focus, uh, it's a great uh, you know, topic to actually discuss. I think, uh, you know, Sunil, you actually brought about this entire thing about what it actually means for mid-market. Right? And I think it actually, as you just started talking about it, it unravels a huge opportunity for mid-market uh, as network as a service. And especially for telcos and CSPs, they have an opportunity to actually have more stickiness with their corporate and enterprise customers by launching network as a service especially with the advantages of 5G, along with capabilities with network slicing, uh, and providing telco grade security. I think these are you know, great features that will clearly attract mid-market. I think some of the key drivers that would actually be of importance is, of course, uh, you know, to have stickiness. Of, I'm sure you know, telcos would consider long-term contracts. Uh, which actually pay off for the investments, uh, you know, in, in deploying cell sites, uh, small cell sites, uh, as well as actually providing that level of network availability that only a telco can provide. So I think that is one feature, and if the cost of ownership, and, and that actually means the total cost of ownership, including for a small or mid-market enterprise to manage their own infrastructure and support it over a five-year period, taking all of those costs into consideration, it will definitely be an attractive proposition. 
Second is, as you touched upon, the flexibility and the scalability that the network using 5G can offer, uh, especially for mid-market uh, companies that expand with branch offices across the country, stores across the country, and if things do not work out or if there's a short-term marketing mission, they can easily uproot the network, move on, and it's just with network provision that they can get activated on the next side. So the opportunities and drivers are actually very many, including security, which is of paramount importance today in the, in, in the business uh, enterprises today. Uh, getting the cover of a telco grade security with features like network slicing will definitely be a key driver in, in terms of adoption uh, by the mid-market and small enterprises. So even for those large enterprises that do not actually go for a private 5G, again, there's a big advantageous use case where large campuses can actually get covered through a network as a service deployment. So I think great opportunity for India. As part of STL, we are delighted uh, to commemorate the launch of 5G services. We launched yesterday what we call as the 5G Cosmos solution, which is basically providing fiber services uh, to the towers and, and small cells, starting with topology design, going to uh, uh, bend insensitive fiber, going to you know intelligently bonded fiber cable, ribbon cable, to going to automation-driven deployment services for fiber. So we are happy to be part of this journey and excited to be in this market. Thank you so much, Praveen. In fact, when I was reading about 5G standards, it um, was a matter of immense pride that India was involved when the standards were drafted, especially the large cell low mobility kind of, kind of standards that are coming up. Requirements specifically covering the so-called developing nations and in 5G what it means for us. Right? The other interesting aspect of slicing, and to my simple mind, what, what that essentially means is that if somebody has already set up a network, and are using it. I can give a small slice of it to a mid-sized business to use for the time that they use and come back, and, and that slice comes back to me. Right? It's, it's as simple as that. I don't need to spend money. I don't need to worry about it. Whatever are my operating expenses, take care of it. And that's where the value unlock is going to happen. Having said that, um, I would now bring in Coel to this discussion uh, from uh, Cisco and get a few perspectives on the network, the equipment, what are exactly the drivers and KPIs that we should be really looking at uh, when we're talking about 5G? We've we spoken a lot about use cases and talking about what it means, but in numbers and in KPIs, what does it actually mean? Over to you, Yeah. Thanks, Sunil. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I think uh, it gives me a immense amount of pride to be sitting uh, uh, during a momentous occasion where we have launched 5G and uh, seeing how we have revolutionized 3G and 4G in this country. I'm very, very hopeful that you know, uh, we will revolutionize 5G as well with uh, numerous new use cases as all my panelists have talked about. Uh, and uh, of course, network as a service will be a great thing that uh, will get a lot, get lot of momentum with the arrival of 5G. So uh, coming back, coming to network as a service, uh, uh, Cisco as a company, uh, we add great value. We believe that this is a potential. In fact. Cisco has dedicated its networking report of this year to network as a service and I would request all of you to refer that. It get, offers great insights in terms of why enterprises are adapting and what are the roadblocks and what is going to happen. In fact, uh, what our studies say is that network as a service is going to grow at a CAGR of 40% starting from 2021 to 2027. So Sorry, just, just to get that number right, you said 40%. Yeah, what, that's, that's astronomical. Yeah, that's wow. what the report says. So yeah, I think so. That shows the great potential that we have. That's of course a global number, but going by what we have done, what India has done with 4G, I believe that number will be higher for us. Uh, coming to a little bit, uh, what is driving this? So uh, there are many different challenges that the enterprises are facing today in terms of multi-use of technologies. Like some of my co-panelists talked about. Wi-Fi 6 coming in, SD WAN coming in, security at the edge becoming important. Then private 5G, right? A lot of private 5G use cases. So enterprises are kind of, you know, they're very confused in terms of which should come first, what should be the sequence. And the whole complexity is mind-boggling. It's like multiple different types of technology coming in all together. And that is one of the drivers where 
you know, where uh, NAS could be a thing uh, for the enterprises, wherein somebody else takes care of the complexity of these different uh, kind of networks and offer these networks to the enterprises in a consumption-based model, wherein they don't really have to go and study all the different kind of technologies. They don't have to invest in a lot of capex. They can go to a NAS provider and say, okay, you know, uh, can you take care of the complexity of the network? Can you design a network which fulfills my X amount of KPIs? Why, why the network uh, NAS provider takes care of all these nitty gritties? The enterprise focuses on the business outcomes. So that's what, and that is not what I am saying. This is what the industry is saying. Again, the same report refers uh, because we have uh, spoken to a wide section of enterprises across different sizes, and this is what is coming across that they would want the NAS provider to take care of the complexities where they focus on business outcomes. And what do they want the NAS providers to give them? Primarily, there are few asks from the NAS providers. One is the ability to scale, right? So the reason that, you know, CapEx investment is time consuming, building a network is time consuming. If my NAS provider can give me an opportunity to scale, and primarily, again, some of my colleagues talked about here about what happened in the application space. The same thing happening in the networking space, saying that, can you grow my network when I need it, right? So that's something that's a key ask. But at the end of the day, resiliency is very, very important. So another key ask from the NAS providers is residency. And uh, what is the KPI and SLAs? What is the uptime you're giving me? And then finally is, are you, what are the metrics, right? How are you measuring it? And that's where I think a lot of work happening in terms of analyzing the KPIs, a lot of AIML work happening in the background. And then also one of the key things is security, right? Again, we talked about security a little bit. Uh, security is becoming very, very important. And as the enterprises give their network to the NAS providers to manage, they always have a question of how do you manage security. So security, I'll talk about it two different parts. One is pure from a life cycle management, wherein the NAS providers are taking care of regular updates and upgrades of the network, and security patches, right? I think uh, that is something that is of paramount importance, but in day-to-day -day network operation, people forget about the patches that are coming. It's like too many, right? There are too many patches coming. When you give it to a NAS provider, that's the primary job they do. They will make sure that the latest and greatest, and they're, they're keeping touch what is happening in the cybersecurity world. So they will continue to apply the latest patches into the network. And then another aspect is how Cisco looks at NAS is a SASE approach. We talked about SASE a little bit in the previous session as well. So for us, when we th think of network as a service, security is very much part of it. So if we look at our security, our SASE architecture, of course, the network part is you know very much part of that, SD-WAN uh, part or, or the network part. Then we have our umbrella, which is the cloud security solution. Then we have Duo, which is the endpoint security. That was also talked about a little bit in the previous session. And the, also, we have an end-to-end visibility, which we offer through our thousand lines. So what we offer to enterprises is a complete package. And uh, that is available to the enterprises as a Cisco Plus offering across, uh, you know, and it is a common offering, which is flexible, consumption-based, cloud-based. And it is cross-architecture in case it, it, is, it is a bundled offering. So that is uh, already available today uh, for enterprises to consume. And uh, apart from that, we also have our private 5G as a service offering. And uh, that has been designed exactly as a NAS. So that's what it is available for the enterprises and operators to resell to the customers. So, so I think uh, uh, overall, I think India has a great potential of network as a service. And that will be accelerated the adoption of 5G for sure. We see a great potential and of course there's a lot of work to be done in terms of you know, adoption across the industries to uh, convince the industries. And also, also one more point I'd like to add. Uh, when we did this survey, when we asked these questions, though we talked about reduction of CapEx and moving, uh, moving to an OPEX-based model as one of the prime drivers, interestingly the CIOs don't think that that is the prime driver. They feel that NAS Getting into a NAS will free up their team's time to, you know, contribute more to business critical activities. That is a little bit surprising, but that's what they see as the main drivers, where the team is not busy in day-to-day nitty-gritties of managing network and configuration and upgrades, etc. 
and they are focusing on the outcome. They are working with the NAS providers to give them the right kind of APIs and SLAs to work with, and they are actually working with the business outcomes. So, yeah, so I think uh, that's how I uh, like to end, and that's how we want our enterprises to be focusing on the outcomes very much. Uh, Thank you so much, Kohil. That brought about a couple of interesting aspects to my mind. One was the whole uh, managed services aspect of it, especially to security. Right? You don't worry about complexity on your side. Let your people focus on things that matter and let the experts take care of the network. One of the things that we noticed when you might have also noticed when you came to this venue is your phone is now 5G. Right? So all of you guys who have a 5G capable phone, just go and check your network. You are right now on a 5G network. I was able to see that. And the thought that came at least to my mind was, hmm, who's managing the security behind it? Like, is, am I still as safe as I was uh, on, on a network outside? <coughs> but that does uh, bring some ease of mind uh, uh, on, on the way you describe the whole structure that there is an end-to-end -end security daytime motion and there's, there's also the network part of it. That would give me an opportunity to bring in Neeraj, Neeraj from Ericsson. And uh, as uh, what I've seen, a lot of us, the it's the fountainhead of a lot of people here. Uh, people emerged out of that one uh, place and uh, some of us go back a long way. So Neeraj, uh, what are your views on network as a service and 5G and, and what does it mean for your customers? Sure, uh, thanks. Uh, I think all the things that they've summarized, it's a momentous occasion. Uh, we are at an inflection point. 4G is not 5G is not even supposed to really complete the If you observe here, one of the big differences between let's say, this event and the previous event is uh, in the previous events, we used to have people who were product vendors, who were from operators, who were all from something called a telecom company. If you just go outside, there are lots of crowds. Who do you see? You see lots of industries. People who don't understand communication. They are here. They are here to understand what can I do bring to my business. You go to all the rooms and all the stores. Technology is somewhere at the back. Many of the guys haven't even demonstrated. What people have demonstrated is which is our recent challenges and that is what. Which is what are those use cases which are going to bring an impact to me as a consumer, to society, to industry, to all the others. Traditionally, we have looked at use cases as B2B. The way I look at these use cases is, at a broad level, all use cases are three to three to eggs. There is a content, there is an application, there is the operator in the middle, and then there is consumer in the middle. Right? So that's a very simple value chain. Right? And you know, from a use case perspective, and you know, two of the guys sitting here they demonstrated in use case. Uh, yesterday at the Prime Minister's opening, what was this that use case about? It wasn't about communication, it was about education, it was about bringing societal change, right? That's the use case. The other use case people demonstrated was on the infrastructure. How can, how can infrastructure be more, more efficient, that's productivity in the UK. People didn't demonstrate, but you go out in the ports, you see entertainment players. In India, as Indians, we are big consumers of internet, of, of entertainment. Right? Uh, games. All your Xboxes that you have, they're all going to vanish in the future. What 5G will bring is all these games are hosted in the cloud, provides that level of latency, and then you're able to consume an Xbox game with high definition video on the go. So the first aspect would be use cases. And broadly, I, in my mind, think in three categories influencing society, which is like education, healthcare. Productivity in it, which is the tunnel use case, the agriculture use case, uh, factories, uh, production of the automation, and the third one is entertainment use case. But have you ever realized all these use cases are running on the same network? So, how do these use cases actually demand what they need from the network? And that's where a simple logic of network as a service comes in. Each of these use cases is going to consume the network. Not in the same way, 
but in different ways. And that's really the beauty of 5G. 5G can be what we use just with one <coughs> means of speed. And there are technologies like splicing that are there that can exactly give you the type of network slice. Slice in very simple terms is quality of service. The current applications that we have, which is basically voice calling, data consuming, is defined by you know how many more drops you had, you know, data consumption. But it's less about latency, it's less about throughput, it's less about APIs that you're consuming. It's, it's also about security. Many of these use cases will demand very high level of security because the panel is open. How do you configure a particular security profile for a slice? So slice is nothing but a way to consume the network. And that's where all of this is encapsulated in a beautiful concept called network as a service. If you open the phone, what comes inside the network as a service is a network. The network is still there. But what, what, what exactly is the difference between 4G and 5G? 5G is all about software. You can do anything with the network you want. A very important thing that's happening is that there are a set of APIs that are going to be defined from network as a service. So the Upper layer applications, the use cases that we spoke about, they're able to use the network the way they want to use the network. And that's where software and software development comes in. The future of all, all, the, all the three operators who I see uh, you know, sitting with me, in a few years down the road, I won't be surprised if I imagine all of you as big software innovation hubs. You have a lot of software programmers, a lot of software developers sitting there like a big innovation factory, innovating, what can I do in which just in which second. Technologies are already there. We have virtualization, we have cloud, private cloud, public cloud, all that is there, it will be evolved. But what will really give a momentum to this is actually the use cases and the way you start to apply those use cases and demands from the network. Network is a beautiful place. It is, it's a very complex. There are billions and trillions of transactions there's a lot of data hidden. There's location in there. There is, you know, you, you can, you know, you can do, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing and a beautiful place, but it's also very complex. And NAS will make it uh, that much simpler. The last point that I just want to touch upon is monetization. 5G also offers new currencies of monetization. Till 4G, all what we monetized was 2GB pack, 4GB pack. In 5G, you can monetize data you can monetize throughput, you can even monetize API. And many of these are critical use cases. So be mindful that if you're not able to meet the demand, if the network is not able to meet the demand, they can depend on the supply. Because, because there's, there's going to be quality of service commitment. So the monetization aspect, new currencies of monetization are also very important in their ways, in part, in putting the entire value chain and the proposition together. So I think it's a beautiful world we are we are we are we are entering and embarking. And uh, network as a service as a concept as an architecture brings to life all these wonderful use cases. Thank you so much, Nuraj. This reminded me of a saying when technology becomes sufficiently advanced, it becomes invisible. Right. And and what we are saying here right now is that network is becoming invisible. It is the use cases that are coming up. What has me completely gobsmacked is this. Each one of those use cases is a business model in itself. Right? Earlier, our life on this side of the table was very simple. There was a connectivity to be sold, there's a pricing, the deals are really straightforward. Now the customer's side is simple. It's a use case and they consume it the way the use case is simple, but that's a business model. So we as operators and vendors have to take that complexity on our side and structure a deal with the API for that business. Network has become invisible, it's become And that's where probably I'll bring in Vikram, you've been in sales, you've been in Siena, you may find structuring contracts it's a bit difficult now given the complexity is coming here and it's an ecosystem player, Gopal pointed out. What are you, you here and how do you see this uh, business model? So uh, I think uh, you know Gopal had summarized it pretty well, right? But, you know, business models are aligning. Uh, you know, as Tohi also mentioned, it's not just a JPEX to an open play, right? 
right? I think it's how you know we can structure the business models to become more relevant to the enterprise, right? But before that, I just take a step back and talk about why the enterprises, especially the medium enterprises, as Ravi mentioned, right, would look at enterprise services. Uh, they are basically into uh, you know uh, looking at a cost structure which is aligned to usage and not just you know storing bulk capacity or spare capacity, right? I think that becomes very relevant to medium enterprises, especially those with multiple branches, because today, as Cohen pointed out, right, when they have to put in upgrades, updates, they need IT folks to be traveling. That becomes cumbersome. It's a huge cost for a low-cost structure, uh, you know, medium enterprise, right? I think that's where, you know, if you structure a mass-based business model, uh, where, uh, you know, the medium enterprise doesn't really need to buy the hardware, the software, the services, and look at a subscription-based model, where he, uh, you know, the, uh, the medium enterprise is getting, uh, you know, a combination of hardware, software, management tools, licenses, and life cycle services. I think that is very critical, right? So it's like IT in a box, what we are today getting. And, uh, you know, that makes it more relevant to them. Uh, see, what's happening is these uh, medium enterprises are already used to business models which the cloud or the hyperscalers have been offering them, right? And they would expect the communication service providers also to come out with NAS where the, CS, uh, where the CST or the telcos would be like the cloud providers or the hyperscalers that they are offering NAS-based consumption models. So it's, it's really going to be all about consumption, how you can really structure business models around consumption and uh, you know uh, how, how they can really become more relevant to the enterprise and go up the value chain, uh, you know, getting it, uh, allowing them to focus on their core functions, their core business and taking care of all their IT applications. Uh, one more point which I think, uh, you know, uh, I would like to bring in, uh, which is, you know, the cloud connectivity piece, right? I think most of the medium enterprises are also looking at cloud interconnects, and that's where uh, you know the operators would need to build network slices on the transport layer, uh, building on ramps, uh, connecting these medium enterprises to direct cloud, uh, you know, the, uh, you know the, uh, the the direct cloud players, right? And the most important play what uh, telcos will be able to bring about with very, very structured business models is when they build in an automation layer, especially around the closed loop automation, because that will really help uh, them to make the networks more predictable, uh, focus on business outcomes for the enterprises, and uh, you know uh, uh, basically help provide uh, you know increased levels of uh, predictability on the network and assurance. I think that is what the enterprises are expecting when the NAS is being delivered to them, uh, you know, by the companies. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Vikram. It brings about a very interesting point and uh, maybe uh, we are not that soon to dream about a world where our mid-market enterprise, because of 5G and the network connectivity, is able to compete efficiently against the best internet. We, are, we, we as a country are competing against the best in the US, the best in the UK, the best in Europe and, and we are winning. Because there is no latency, the network permits that, the use cases are tried and pressure tested back home, that is a good advantage. And, and to that point, I would like to bring in Vijoy. Vijoy, you have been uh, primarily based out of the US, uh, you have been uh, visiting us for some time now. How do you see this panning out on a global scale and the role that the uh, Indian organizations and what value 5G will unlock for them? Thank you. I think we covered NAS panel since I'm the last one here. I think my top main points in NAS have been made, so I'm not going to try to repeat that. I'll give you a broader perspective, but before I get there, three key aspects that I see from you from NAS's perspective. One is the fact that you need to have cloud native drive that software, softwareization network. Second, as just mentioned, is the API aspect. Because if you're going to run this as a consumption model, it needs to be provided for APIs. That's the second one. The third is, of course, as just mentioned, automation. 
they can have remove the headache at enterprise, we need to make sure that the network is automated. And when we consider these three legs towards the foundation of what doing uh, network as a service offering, a couple of things that stand out here. If you look at the workloads that are available globally, and look at new technologies that evolve, we open RAM is one area where I would put a lot of emphasis on due to a couple of reasons. One, if we consider cloud native as a requirement to actually drive network as a service offering, Open RAN disaggregates that. It removes the amount of equipment that's going to sit at the operator location. And in this case, you could have the remaining equipment actually sit in a data center that's to hundreds of kilometers away, depending upon the kind of split. Or in the Open RAN case, it's 30 kilometers away. And in that side of the setup, now in a multi tenant scenario, you're able to pool the resources across different enterprise use cases, which means the network becomes more efficient. And lastly, because the technology is not driven by one particular basic solution, which is custom built for enterprise, you can play in open silicon play. So for example, NVIDIA today, which is primarily used in a lot of enterprise locations for computer vision use cases, could be looking at cameras, or the amount of data that the camera generates, and mining the data. That sort of GPU that's on the factory floor running in a server, with an open RAM, open technology, you could leverage the same GPU to actually run connected with these solutions. And that sort of open silicon method is only possible with an open silicon method. Where I'm going there is the consumption model is changing. So we all talked in depth about the different use cases. But when we look at where the data center processing is happening today, globally, less than 10% is happening outside of the traditional data center. Meaning, private cloud is where all processing is happening. And we talk about NAS, you have to migrate that into cloud offering, which could be private cloud for most time, but the hyperscalers are the ones who started in that model. If you think about it, the infrastructure, the fast layer, and the software as a service, they've been doing that forever. But now recently, in the last year and a half, we saw AWS launch private 5G, they call it P5G offering, which is an app offering in AWS, which means they're getting into the application space. Google just this last week, and we, we had an announcement with Google as well this week, they have different vendors coming and start offering NAS. So you see the hyperscalers evolve their play from just doing infrastructure to, to software to actually starting to offer services. Similar with OEMs, you have Dell with the Apex offering, HP with the GreenLake offering. And very recently, if you look at what Intel is doing, as a chipset provider, even they're moving into the SaaS offering. So the latest version is the Sapphire Act. There's inbuilt technology there that operators or enterprises don't want to pay for the CPU upgrade. So every generation comes with comes significant benefits that happen, right? So rather than consume it as a one-time service, Intel is now offering that as a consumption model, even for silicon. Meaning that if an operator or an enterprise is leveraging X number of cores from Intel, in the next generation, you use it as needed, rather than purchasing the full chipset. So you see this evolution that's happening not just from a technology perspective for vendors, but all players get into the space. So earlier, where it was just a hyperscaler providing connectivity and software, you have the side players, you've got uh, the OEM chipset players, you've got hyperscalers themselves who want to provide the services. So globally, I see, and this is all possible only because it's 5G and it's opened up the network. If it was a closed solution, then you cannot have these different players come in. So silicon players, SI players, hyperscalers, operators, and enterprises themselves, very large enterprises like FedEx and others, the thing is running their own network because they can lease spectrum in India, I'm not sure if the private spectrum allocations have happened yet, but globally you look at US, the CDRS, Europe is banned testing for private networks. And that opportunity then lends itself to enterprises to actually create their own offer. And today most of these services we see around basic use cases. Wi-Fi augmentation, Wi-Fi replacement, because the mobility is not there, the coverage is not there, the security aspects of Wi-Fi are not as stringent as what you would get with satellite connectivity. So we see most of the cases as an augmentation of Wi-Fi for private networks. But in the future, it can be full network offering. Like, for example, in the US, you have Dish that's running fully in the public cloud. It's not as a SaaS offering, but we have other operators like Kajiko who have running this in the public cloud, fully on a consumption model. And that's fundamentally changing how operators think about building up the network as well, right? So we're not just talking about 
regular service like an SP RAN service or a private network offering, even a full MPNO offering on a fly being spun out in a public network or on-prem, on demand, and it can only off when it's not needed. That's the kind of evolution that we see happening in the industry. Thank you so much, Vijay. And now it, it, it brings about a thought to us that why 5G network as a service has simplified life for the customers, at least that's the idea behind it. It has made the life more complicated on the other side of the wall. And then there are three things where the life is getting a bit difficult. First is 5G has managed to break down the silos. Like you said, there are hyperscalers who are getting into this space. There are companies who are op uh, asking for private licenses to come in. So the operators are not the only one with the network. The second interesting point that's happening is, as, as to the ecosystem play that Gopal talked about, each one of that layer is now a service. It's not just network as a service. It, it's silicon chips as a service, like you talked about, right? It, it's storage. Everything is a service, which means the value is stitching a solution together. Because that can be stitched across all of these services. And then the future life is you can imagine the solution and stitch it together. And as a last topic of discussion that we can have among us, and I throw it open to all the panelists while I anchor on Atul, is that as vendors and operators, are we ready to take this on from an organization change perspective, from a customer change perspective? Are we ready? As I was speaking earlier, I think uh, NAS is not a new thing for us and for all operators. Uh, we have been uh, in this business, uh, for example, I'll just give you one example, bandwidth on demand or software defined radios or, or, or work from home uh, as a service is already running. And 5G is just going to add on to new services apart from these three or four which are just basic kind of stuff. And, and I think this is not only applicable for the enterprises, as, as Neeraj was mentioning, it's applicable for uh, B2C customers as well. I mean, gaming as a service, for example, is just a small, uh, you know, example of that. And as far as operators, Airtel is concerned, I think uh, it's just a matter of infrastructure readiness and making some investments, which we have been doing for these three, four services already. And 5G has this network that rolled out. I think these backend applications, and also it has to be on a uniform OSS BSS layer, which, so that you can give a uniform customer experience to. Uh, you know, all the customers. Uh, so this is one area which everybody is, we are investing on it, and I think it is just a matter of time that when we are fully ready to give a picture of services on, on uh, 5G and that as next. So I think we are fully ready, and uh, it, it's just a matter of creating a need for the customer. I think once you show a value, the need will be created. I think that's how I look at it. It's heartening to know that we are all prepared and ready. It's not too much of a change from this side of the world. And 5G is a network as a service. It's not just the next step in technology. It's a fundamental building block of the future. Right? It, it's a new way of thinking about it. It's a new set of use cases that has been enabled. Uh, it is raising its own challenges in terms of how we need to come together as an ecosystem and orchestrate ourselves so that we take on the workload while the customer derives the value of it. So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for this wonderful session. It's been my privilege to moderate this, and uh, it's been an extremely entertaining one hour to understand and delve down on these issues. So thank you so much.